Okay, this video is going to show the installation of T-nuts onto plywood for a home rock climbing wall. I'm going to be sheeting this back wall with three quarter inch plywood. And as you can see, I've already got a wall here on the left, which is kind of a bulge, varying degrees, uh, probably somewhere around, averages probably between 20 and 30. Then over here, I've got a 60 degree overhang with the volume it goes up about 14 feet high and then over here 10 feet high or so is a 40 degree wall with another volume and transition in between but today i'm just going to be drilling holes installing t-nuts and then i'm going to sheet this entire back wall it'll all be vertical so a little less pumpy than the rest of the wall but a good addition for a variety of surfaces first thing i've done is i've thrown some lumber down on the ground just to protect the cement keep you from digging up the end of your drill bit and i'm going to try to place these one on the end of each sheet one in the middle and then one on the far end of the sheet over there and that will give me just nice surface to drill on so i'm gonna go get the lumber okay i brought some lumber in i've got four sheets of plywood here this is pretty nice cabinet grade stuff and I put a clamp on the corner after I got the four sheets lined up and I didn't have another clamp handy so I just threw a long about three and a half inch grabber screw right there on the corner it goes all the way through to the bottom and now my studs again on the wall behind that insulation are 16 on center so I'm gonna mark where those will lie on these sheets going to do that with a pencil and then I'm going to chalk lines so that I can drill and not have to worry about drilling a hole where a stud is going to end up later. Okay, I have now chalked my lines 16 inches apart. I'm going to try to steer clear of those as I drill. I'm using a 7 16 spade bit. I really like this one. It has a threaded tip. can't remember the brand but I'll find it. I might put a note in the comments because it goes in super straight and that threaded tip just it's kind of something extra you don't see on a lot of the bits. It makes it go in very smoothly at any speed. Uh, what else? It's 7 16 That's the proper size to use for T-nuts. Don't go a step bigger than that, which would be half inch. I've done that before. It makes for a pretty sloppy T-nut placement. There is a size down from this. It's kind of a specialty bit. I've never had one, but I've read that it works even better if you want the T-nuts extremely straight and very tight uh, it's like a 30 second down from a 7 16th I don't even know where to get one but I have heard of people using those if you do use those I think it's probably a little harder to pound in the t-nuts but they will stay in better but don't be afraid of 7 16th that's the normal size for putting in a standard climbing hole t-nut I'm going to just drill my holes random as you can see up here on my wall I just go for it. I was pretty nervous at first. I've done it on a grid before and I just kind of didn't like it as much. It's it, uh, it probably saves some time and it can look nice if you do a good job, but I kind of just like the organic feel and look of just having these very random. So that's how I do it. Do it however you want. My spacing, I go really tight. These are four to five inches apart. It is so much better, but I will warn you, you end up spending a lot of money in T-nuts. It's a lot more T-nuts than if you were to do a 6 or 8 inch uh, spread. So, that's my advice. Buy more T-nuts, you won't regret it. So, now I'm just going to go for it. Make sure, go slow, get the, get the uh, holes drilled extremely straight, and you'll be fine. All right, I've drilled the perimeter around one 16 inch wide section, staying in between the stud lines that I chalked. And the first time that I did random, I was pretty nervous, really. You don't have any plan to go off of, you're just kind of going for it. What I found helps me out so that I'm not so timid, trying to decide where each one should go. Just pick a section like I've done here, and then just go all the way around the perimeter, kind of weaving back and forth maybe one to two inches and stay 
very clear of your stud lines that you've chalked. Then it's so much easier to go back after this perimeter is established and just take your drill and always try to stay about four to five inches away from another hole. And it'll end up very random, very natural. I really like it. I also can't recommend enough. Put as many T-nuts in as you can afford. Again, four inch spacing is really awesome when you go to set problems, especially on a small home gym, you end up with a lot of problems routes that you know are very close to each other and you don't have a lot of room to put the holes so it's nice having all those extra holes all those extra options at your disposal so i'm going to finish by filling uh, in the perimeter with more holes and we'll go from one there. section is completely done now except maybe 20 seconds of sanding i'll do just to take the burrs off those holes uh, just to cut a few notes I remembered why I love this drill bit so much. Those threaded, that threaded tip makes it so that the wood and the spinning will pull the bit down all the way through the sheets without you pushing on the drill at all. And what that means, that's not neat because you can be lazy. That is neat because you get to spend your effort and your brain power trying to keep that drill as straight as possible. I'm not using any kind of jig or any, there's a lot of mechanical aids you can get to help you drill those holes straight. I just eyeball it, be careful. As long as you don't stray more than a degree or two to either side, you'll be fine. I've got quite a few T-nut holes up here that weren't perfectly straight. The T-nut still went in fine and the holes grab on and it's no big deal. But it's nice, that drill bit makes it easier. Uh, one other thing I'll mention is I switched to the electric drill. Cordless drills, I've even got a pretty diesel on. It's a DeWalt. I've got two batteries, but they just cannot cut it when you're drilling this many holes through that many sheets for an entire climbing wall. So I just picked up a very cheap, it's like a $19 drill from Harbor Freight, but it's electric. They drill a lot faster. It's just better to have a uh, plugged in corded drill for this type of work. So you can do it with the cordless. You just probably be waiting for batteries to recharge often. So that's how far I've gotten. I'm going to finish this out and then I'll resume by pounding some T-nuts in the back. Show you how that works. It's pretty straightforward. I'm now finished drilling the holes. There are approximately 264 holes per sheet, four sheets, and it's quite a few. It's so far in this home climbing wall, I'm into it probably, well, after I finish this back wall, I'll be into it right around 4,000 T-nuts. Again, about four or five inch spacing. I'm gonna now take this clamp off take the grabber screw out of the other corner which is holding that side lined up and I will pound the t-nuts in the back show you that now one thing that's nice to have these sanding discs that just hook into a normal drill super nice not very expensive very fast I sanded this entire wall every t-nut hole just lightly just to get the big stuff off I'll do that on this top sheet the bottom sheets hopefully won't need too much of that but it doesn't take long with that sanding pad got some t-nuts here and it's time to start pounding these are just the standard 3 8 uh, 16 t-nuts and they go in a 7 16 hole these are the four prong style you'll see other styles that have holes drilled in the surface and then you put little uh, tiny little screws into the wood from this direction I like these four prong especially for a home wall most home walls, you have access behind the wall like I do here, or you can easily remove a sheet if you don't put a bazillion grabber screws in it. These rarely pop out for me. I would consider the other ones if it was either for maybe a commercial or highly trafficked setting, or if you have a lot of people setting routes, especially maybe people that aren't going to be so careful as the owner of the wall like you would be. Then I might recommend something a little heavier duty. Maybe even put a little dab of construction adhesive on there. But 
You don't want them too hard to get out because sometimes you'll booger up the threads and need to replace one. So I just recommend these. Pound them in good. You'll be fine. One thing to note before I put the sheet down on the cement, make sure and sweep really well because this sheet is now face down on the ground. And you, if you've had a nail or even a, any anything under there, it's going to make a dent. Even sawdust can kind of mess up the front surface. Not that it'll matter that much, but it's just might as well do it. It's easy to do. Okay, so these T nuts, all you got to do is put them in the hole. And as long as your holes are pretty straight, you just pound these in good. That's pretty much it. It'll stay in there super tight. And once you put a climbing hold on there and cinch it down even more, uh, it'll be pretty much permanent. There are other ways you can do this. I've heard of people using a block of wood and a long bolt and sinking each one in individually. Again, I might do that if I was in a situation where it was commercial or I was going to be having a lot of people really jamming bolts in there and knocking T-nuts out the back. But, you know, for my situation, I think 99% of home walls, I think what you just saw me do is perfectly adequate. It has been for me. So... Got 260 something of these to do on this sheet. And times that by the four sheets, I'm going to be here a while. We'll make you watch all that. Okay, I'm all done. Got all the T nuts in, all the holes, pounded them in nice, made sure they're all secure. Again, once this, this wall in particular, since it's just vertical, I will have limited access to the back. So I want the T nuts as good as possible. This other wall and this one, I can get behind it. So it's a little bit easier to do a repair but took extra time make sure this was right for this one i'm gonna put that on the wall hang it up with just a whole bunch of gold screws probably two and a half inches and it'll be good to go i ended up again putting as many t-nuts on there as i could about four to five inch spacing makes it really nice for home gyms you don't need quite as much hold density maybe at a commercial gym but at a home gym you end up getting a lot of holds over the years and you want to put them all up and it's just nice to have lots of options and not be limited because you didn't drill enough holes so there you go thanks a lot for watching hopefully something in here was helpful it's all pretty common sense and straightforward but try to provide a couple of tips if you like that or going to build a wall on other tips i've got a website homerockclimbingwalls.com and check that out there's lots of Things on there, good examples of cool walls that other people have built, as well as my own wall that I'll be putting a lot of uh, tips and instructions up based on that. It's a lot of work putting these T-nuts in. If you got anybody that loves you, invite them over and have them help out and have a fun time climbing.